everyone, Kate here, and in this video, I'll be sharing with you three different hairstyles from the 1920s through to the early 1930s that are suitable for longer hair and do not require any curling. Curled or waved hair really was the it thing during this time period, and most styles required it in some form or another, especially when we're looking at long hair options. However, there are a handful of historical do's that can be recreated with no curling or waving involved. Which is great news for me, since as much as I absolutely adore having my hair curled, it's naturally quite straight, and I can't always be bothered to sleep in curlers. Most of these styles are intended for straight hair, but they should work beautifully on wavy hair as well. If you have naturally curly hair, well, then first off, I'm very jealous of you, and secondly, you definitely have some better styling options available to you, so some of these might be fun to try, but there are styles in this time period that are going to work a lot better. I also find these updos work best on hair that is not perfectly clean, as an extra bit of dirt and grease will help them stay in place. I unfortunately had to film this on a day when my hair was a bit too clean to really properly hold an updo, but I'm going to try my best. Well, without any further ado, let's get started. Let's start with a classic and perhaps one of the more prolific of these straight hairstyles. This one always kind of reminds me of the actress Anne Harding, as she was often seen sporting similar styles, although with some variation. You see a lot of sleek versions of this updo in magazines from the late 1920s and into the very early 1930s as well. Sometimes there's a variation of the style where it appears to have been done in two parts, with the bottom hair pulled back separately and draped a little differently than the top, but I haven't been successful in recreating this and actually having it look good, so I'm going to be sticking with the basics today. Begin by parting the hair straight down the middle. Smooth the hair down and twist at the back into a low, full bun, securing a place with some bobby pins. The hair should hang low enough on the sides to cover the ears. There you have it, a very simple updo that is just as suitable to an evening gown as it is to an afternoon dress. You can definitely play around with this style a bit. For example, a different option would be to part the hair off to one side and then to brush it away from the face rather than straight down and again secure at the back in a low bun. Or if you have particularly thick locks, you can make several buns along the back of the neck to hold all that hair up. Feel free to play around with what best suits your face shape. For our next style, we are going to do a braided earphone style. This look was very popular in the early 1920s through to the 1930s, but which because of a certain science fiction movie, most people may not immediately associate with this time period. There are ways, however, to style it in a manner that's a bit more wearable. Begin by parting the hair down the middle and dividing the hair into two equal sections, one on each side. Take one of these sides and, starting about the ear, braid it all the way to the end. Then, Wrap it into a spiral, securing with pins as you go. Now, often the braid was spiraled into a big cinnamon bun directly over the ear, but I find that a, a bit too silly looking on me to be wearable. Plus, it's very hard not to jab yourself in the ear when putting in the bobby pins. Instead, I make a flatter spiral slightly behind the ear along the nape of the neck. Well, 
While I don't often wear this style as is, I do think it really shines when you add a hat. It's the perfect updo for pairing with those 1920s and early 1930s style hats, as they fit easily over top, plus the braids add a bit more interest than you would get with a regular bun. And lastly, let's attempt a swirl updo. I was going to mention that I followed this set of instructions from a 1930 issue of Photoplay magazine for this tutorial, but I found these instructions to be incredibly confusing. I don't know if my hair is just too short, or the author said left when they meant right, or perhaps I'm just misinterpreting what the article says. I don't know, but in the end, I use the instructions more as inspiration to come up with a similar style. This style works best on wavy hair that is quite long. Done on perfectly straight hair, I find it gives more of an early 1920s look, whereas the wavy hair gives more of a 1930s one. It also works better on thick hair, especially hair that is thick all the way to the ends. Which is, is not me, but as I said, I'm going to try my best. To begin, comb and brush the hair into a side part. The side with less hair, which in my case is my left side, is then swept low to the back and pinned in place. You can actually pin this entire section flat against the back of the head in, say, a very flat bun, or if you have thin hair like mine, you can combine it with the right section to fill it out a bit more. Next, take the right section, or the side that you have more hair on, and wrap it around the back up towards the left. Continue to wrap the hair up and over the head. It should come up and over the part and end back on the right side. Secure in place with some pins and a hair ornament. This one takes a bit of practice to get just right, but when you do, it's a really cute and secure style. And there you have it. Three historically appropriate updos with nary a curling wand in sight. Well, that's it for now. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you.